In the summer of 1944, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg is a brilliant young officer with a distinguished war record. He's an early supporter of the Nazi movement, but news of the regime's brutality convinces him that Hitler must be eliminated. July 20th, 1944. Stauffenberg is summoned to a conference at the Wolf's Lair, Hitler's remote military headquarters in East Prussia. This is where Stauffenberg will make the 41st attempt to kill Hitler. Wolf's Lair is a two square mile compound divided into three nested security zones, each with its own checkpoints and razor wire fences. The outer perimeter is ringed with minefields, machine gun nests, and anti-aircraft guns. The tightly controlled inner circle, where Hitler resides, holds an assortment of outbuildings and massive concrete bunkers. The walls of Hitler's personal bunker are more than 16 and a half feet thick. He clearly feels very, very safe there. Hitler's sense of security will prove to be false. Stauffenberg manages to smuggle two one-kilogram slabs of plastic explosives into the compound. The security at the Wolf's Lair is astounding. Now, it's focused on several specific threats, air attack, airborne assaults, raids. As good as, and as layered as the security is, it is not proof against someone attacking from inside Hitler's inner circle. If they are trusted, if they can get a weapon into proximity with Hitler inside the inner defense zone, then yes, they have a shot at taking Hitler out. Moments before his meeting with Hitler, Stauffenberg and his aide arm the first brick of explosives and hide it in a briefcase. Before they're able to fuse the second bomb, there's a knock on the door. Stauffenberg is ordered to the briefing room immediately. He grabs the briefcase and heads out the door, leaving behind the second brick of explosives. The time pencils that von Stauffenberg used technically were 30-minute devices. The problem is it was a hot day. It was a humid day. And these are things that tend to speed that up. He was walking around with a live time bomb that could go off any time. When Stauffenberg enters the room, the meeting is already underway. He takes a position near Hitler and places the briefcase on the floor. Moments later, he excuses himself from the room. As the meeting continues, a one kilogram bomb sits a mere three feet from the Fuhrer. Only seconds remain on the fuse. As the smoke clears, Stauffenberg is headed to Berlin to help manage the transition of government power. He had watched the explosion from a, a short distance away, uh, and he was of the conviction that no one in the room could have survived. The blast blows out windows, part of a wall, and buckles the floor. The conference table is shattered, and the plaster ceiling comes crashing down. Of the 20-plus men in the room, four are fatally wounded. But Hitler himself emerges with relatively minor injuries. Subsequently, he begins to see his survival as further evidence of the intervention of Providence. As he explains to his doctor, he says, I am immortal. I am invulnerable. <laughs> 